Today we're going to discuss the history, makeup, production, and mechanical properties of Damascus steel. It was first manufactured around 500 AD in the Middle East, supposedly in Damascus, which is where it gets its name. It was frequently used to make knives and swords because it was harder and stayed sharper longer than other materials. It was identifiable by its characteristic wavy pattern, though there was a high demand it stopped being manufactured in the 19th century. The means of its manufacture was lost in about the span of a generation, which was a mystery until recently. The secret of manufacturing Damascus steel wasn't the swordsmith's technique, but the composition of the material it was manufactured from. The steel ingots used to produce it were sourced from India, but in the 19th century, the mining region the ingots were sourced from changed. The new ingots could not be forged into Damascus steel. Because swordsmiths did not have the knowledge we do today of material composition, the manufacturing of Damascus steel was lost for centuries. In 1998, J. D. Verhoeven discovered the composition of the original ingot. Many people tried and failed to identify the composition of woods, which was the type of steel found in India used to make Damascus steel. After much research, it was realized that it had a very rich carbon content. Many think that it was 1-2% to 2 carbon, while most steels only have a fraction of 1% carbon. It is believed that woods was prepared in crucibles containing cakes of porous iron plus wood or charcoal to raise the carbon content. It was processed at about 2300 degrees Fahrenheit, held at that temperature for days, then cooled to room temperature over about the span of a day, and shipped to the Middle East for fabrication. Like the composition of woods, the heat treatment of Damascus steel was also found through trial and error because of the rigid secrecy around its production. First, the woods was heated to about 700 degrees Fahrenheit while it was shaped. After shaping the material, it was reheated to about the same temperature and then quenched, or rapidly cooled. The medium used for quenching was one of the biggest secrets. Some claims were that it was dragon blood, donkey urine, and red or green medicine. While many of these techniques were based on superstition, it is believed that they may have contributed to the success of the process through nitrogen added to the alloy. The low heat preserved enough carbide to give the metal strength, but not so much as to make it brittle. The large carbide grains contribute to the wavy pattern Damascus steel is known for. Damascus steel, unlike other steels, has a high carbon content, which makes it unnaturally strong yet not brittle. Damascus steel has an average yield strength of 740 megapascals, an ultimate tensile strength of 1068 megapascals, and a 10% strain at fracture, while hot rolled 1 weight percent plain carbon steel has an average yield strength of 550 megapascals, an ultimate tensile strength of 965 megapascals, and a 6% strain at fracture. The higher yield strength means that Damascus steel will begin to plastically deform after the plain carbon steel. The higher tensile strength means that the Damascus steel will resist breaking under tension longer than the plain carbon steel. And the higher strain at fracture means that the Damascus steel will resist changes of shape without cracking longer than the plain carbon steel. All of this to say that the Damascus steel is a much stronger, less brittle material than the plain carbon steel. Let's quickly review. Damascus steel was a popular material for swords in the pre-industrial age, but when the mining region changed, the art of forging Damascus steel was lost for many years. It was popular because it was stronger and stayed sharper longer than most materials. J.D. Verhoeven rediscovered the manufacturing process of Damascus steel in 1998. It was made of wood steel and had a higher carbon content than most steels due to being prepared in crucibles with cakes of porous iron and wood or charcoal. It was heated for days and then slowly cooled to room temperature. The material was then heated and quenched in an unknown substance, but the superstitions around the substance indicate it raised the nitrogen content and therefore the strength. The signature wave pattern comes from the large carbide grains in Damascus steel. It has a higher yield strength, tensile strength, and percent at fracture than plain carbon steel. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed.